Well, hello, pray and share warriors. How are y'all doing tonight? It is Saturday. Tomorrow is Sunday. Tomorrow is 4th of July. So I wanted to talk to you about who gives us freedom. Who do you think gives us freedom? Where do we get our freedom? Just kind of wanted to discuss that and read some scriptures that back that up and um, anyway just kind of be thinking about that okay so let's jump into some prayer I hope your day was awesome I just got through eating dinner and I made me some pink lemonade that has lots of sugar in it just like all the sugars in the bottom I drank from the bottom all go and I go Oh, that's where all the flavor is. Oh, my. So I don't want to drink from the bottom anymore. It kind of got me choked a while ago when I sucked up all that sugar. Okay, let's jump into some prayer. God, we just thank you. We thank you that you do give us freedom, God. We get our freedom from you. God, we thank you that you are in control and that you are on your throne and that there is nothing that is hidden from you. You are the great Jehovah. You are the great I Am. You are our everlasting Father. You are my creator. You are our sustainer. You are our provider, our protector. You are our shelter in the storm. You are our strength and our refuge. God, you are everything to us. God, thank you for that you are the righteous judge, God. You will judge all unrighteousness. Things that are not taken care of here on earth will be taken care of by you, God. But you want none to perish, God. You want people to come in repentance, to repent, to ask for forgiveness because you are kind and compassionate and loving and you are patient. You want none to perish, God. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for calling us as your children. We love you with our whole heart, our soul, our mind, and our strength. And God, we cry out to the lost, for the lost, God. We cry out for the lost. We just cry out, God, that you would open their eyes and their ears to the truth, that you would allow the Holy Spirit to draw them to Jesus so they could be saved, that you would soften their hearts, that you would just open their hearts and their minds to truth also. God, we pray for the prodigals. We pray for them to return to you, to repent, and for you to reconcile their relationship, God. The relationship that y'all, <clears throat> that you once had with them. God, we pray for all the people in Florida we pray for all the families, all the friends of these people that are still missing. Down to 125 now that are still missing, God. We just pray that, uh, we pray for miracles, God. We pray that these people would be found. And uh, we pray also, God, for all of the government officials that are involved in this, God. We just pray for them. We pray for these families for peace, comfort, and strength as they wait, God, as they wait for confirmation. God, we just pray for uh, the rescuers, God, that are out there. They're putting their life on the line 24-7, God. We just pray for them, that you would give them strength to keep doing what, what they have been called to do. And God, we pray for all the people that have lost loved ones. We just pray for peace, comfort, and strength for them. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Well, I didn't share anything until this afternoon. I've kind of been busy today. I've been getting some things done around my house. I just realized I didn't get one thing done that I was supposed to get done. I forgot about it. Um, but maybe tonight. Maybe I will do that tonight. Okay, so. This afternoon, I shared this song called Rooftops. 
and uh, part of it talks about that Jesus makes us free but I love this song and message rooftops by Jesus culture featuring Kim Walker Smith so I was thinking this morning about freedom and I thought about who gives us freedom and God does God gives us freedom through Jesus many people have not been taught that our Constitution is based on godly values our Constitution is based on godly values our country was founded on godly values and our laws are based on God's laws so God gives our our free God gives us our freedom but who helps us keep our freedom here in our country who helps us maintain that freedom well that is the brave sons and daughters that have given their lives for our freedoms to be maintained and the ones that have gone to fight the ones that have come back also they they have maintained our freedom so tomorrow we celebrate Independence Day many do not realize because they have grown up with freedom including me I've grown up with freedom I don't know what it's like to live in a country without freedom and I really don't want to know uh, we tend to take our freedoms for granted we do I'm thankful that I am a child of God and through his son he set me free I'm thankful that people for generations have fought to maintain the freedoms that our founding fathers intended us to keep they wanted us to keep this freedom they did not want us to be like other countries that don't have freedom um, I'm thankful for this country I'm thankful to be an American blessed to live in Texas and I pray for our country to stay strong, free, and to unify just like it once was. Are you thankful today to be free from the bondage of tyranny, free from the bondage of sin, through salvation in Jesus? If Jesus is not your Savior, then call upon his name and be saved now. Jesus is the only path to heaven and forgiveness of sin. Time is short. The time is now to turn back to the one true God. God wants none to perish. John 3, 16 through 21. Call upon the name of Jesus and be saved today. Alright, so that is what I shared today about freedom. But I have scriptures that I want to look up to. Because God does give us that freedom. He gives us free will. He gives us free choice. He gives us freedom. And then our country gives us freedoms within our country, within our laws, within what we are supposed to be. We are supposed to be a free people. Really, the people in each state have the power over the government I know that's not what we're taught and that's not what people say but each state has a constitution and they each state that that the people the people have the power they have the power over the government officials they do read your state constitution you the people we the people have the power over our government officials that we elect we vote for we vote them in and if they're not working for us then you know they don't need to be working for themselves they need to be working for us and we've had many 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 government officials that do not work for us we have some now they don't work for us they work for themselves and for their gain not for we the people okay well I don't want to turn this into a political thing because I want to get into scripture I could turn it into a political thing but I choose not to okay so Galatians 5 1 
Galatians 5 1 says this. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free. It's Jesus that made us free. He set us free from the bondage that we had in our lives. Um, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Do not be entangled again with the yoke of bondage, which is sin. Behold, I, Paul, say unto you that if ye be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. For I testify again to every man that is circumcised that he is a debtor to do the whole law. <clears throat> so Jesus came so that we don't have to be circumcised anymore. We get circumcised in our heart. And so Jesus is the one that brought us that freedom. They call it liberty in here, but that's freedom. He brought us the freedom from bondage. So let's read Galatians 5.13, which is in here too. For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. So what that means is we have been called to freedom, but we don't need to use that freedom as an excuse for uh staying in the bondage of sin and we need to serve one another by love we need to serve one another for all the law is fulfilled in one word even in this thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself so we are to love each other I don't see a lot of love going on in our country I see a lot of hate I think mostly it's love, but the hate is louder than the love, if that makes any sense. But we are to love. We are called to love. We are called to live in this freedom that Jesus has given us. Let's read 2 Corinthians 3.17. I really don't have a lot of scripture tonight. Now the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Um, so again, that word liberty, liberty is freedom. It's so being free. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. But we all with open face beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory even as by the Spirit of the Lord. Okay. So let's go to 1 Peter 2.16. I just kind of, I didn't look up a whole lot of scriptures about this. 1 Peter 2.16 As free and not using your liberty for a cloak of maliciousness, but as the servants of God. For so is the will of God that with well-doing ye may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. And then the next part is as free and not using your liberty for a cloak of maliciousness but as the servants of God. Honor all men, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the king. Servants are subject to your master with all fear, not only to the good and gentle, but also to the froward. So, free. So we are free. And we're not supposed to use our liberties to stay in our sin or to stay in maliciousness. But we are the servants of God. Okay, so let's read the last one. John 8, 36. I think this is the one that most people are familiar with. John 8, 
36. Okay, John 8, 36. If the Son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. I know that ye are Abraham's seed, but ye seek to kill me, because my word hath no place in you. I speak that which I have seen with my father, and ye do that which ye have seen with your father. So he was talking to the Pharisees. So the Son, if we are free in the Son, then we are free indeed. So tomorrow we celebrate freedom. Tomorrow we celebrate that day when they signed that Declaration of Independence and declared our freedom. And then many people have gone before us and have fought to keep our freedoms. So let's be thankful for them too. The ones that gave the ultimate price, which was their life, and the ones that returned too. Let's be thankful for them tomorrow as we celebrate freedom. I may celebrate freedom at home just being free. Just. <laughs> and we are going to church tomorrow, though. I'm going to church to celebrate God because He is the one that gives us the freedom through Jesus Christ. He is the one that makes a way for us to be free. Otherwise, we wouldn't be free. We would continue to be in bondage. But he made a way. He paved the way. All right, let's see. I don't know if I have anything about freedom over here. And really, some organization over here would be as much needed. Yeah, how about, how about this one? Your ticket to heaven. I love this one. I love your ticket to heaven. Okay. Let's offer salvation tonight. Your ticket to heaven. May I offer you a ticket to heaven? You don't have to pay for it. And that's a good thing. Because you could never afford to buy it. It's free. It's free but only because someone has already paid the ultimate price for it. God loves you and not only wants you to have a fulfilling life on earth, He also wants you to live with Him in heaven forever. He's the one who offers you a paid in full ticket and He is the one that offers freedom too. No one wants to go to hell where there will be no joy and no pleasures whatsoever. But God doesn't want anyone to go there either. The Bible says that God is not wishing that any should perish. 2 Peter 3, 9 But there is a problem with getting that free ticket. We, ought, we have all done wrong. We have all sinned, haven't we? God's word says, If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. 1 John 1, 8 Sin pollutes. It makes us unclean unfit for God's presence in that wonderful, perfect place called heaven. Sin penalizes. It separates us from a sinless God. For the wages of sin is death. Romans 6.23 In short, our sinfulness blocks the delivery of the ticket that we need to get into heaven. So the next part says, who paid for it? Wait, there's good news. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, came to earth to be born and to live his life without sin. He suffered once for our sins, the righteous one for the unrighteous, which is all of us, that he might bring us to God. 1 Peter 3.18 When God laid on him the iniquity, the sins of us all, Isaiah 53.6, Jesus cried out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Mark 15:34 The answer is simple and profound. Jesus was separated from God because he took your place and mine on the cross. And by dying, he paid in full the wages our sins had earned. 
Then he rose from the dead, was seen by hundreds of people, and is alive today so you can know him and receive the gift of eternal life. Your ticket to heaven. That's right. The Bible says, to all who did receive him, Jesus, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. John 1, 12. That is so awesome. You can become a new person, born of God to start a brand new life that pleases God. And of course, all God's children have a ticket to heaven. So the next part is, do you want it? It is no accident you were given this offer of a ticket to heaven. God has made sure you can receive it. The whole issue is, did Jesus pay for all your sins or didn't he? God said he did. Trust God that it is so. Whoever believes in the Son of God has eternal life, John 3:36. Just as a man says, yes, I will take this woman to be my wife, God wants you to tell him, yes, I will take Jesus to be my Savior. I believe that he is the only way to heaven. The Bible says whoever has the Son, Jesus, has life. 1 John 5:12. If you believe that God's way to heaven is the only way, you can claim your ticket by telling God in words like these. So repeat after me if you would like to accept this free ticket to heaven that Jesus paid, his, paid for all of our sins with. Dear God, I have sinned. I know I have offended you in many ways. I am so sorry. I believe that Jesus suffered and died for my sins, paid my debt in full, and rose again. Jesus, I believe in you and thank you for what you've done for me. Please save me from the penalty of my sins and give me a new birth and the power to live for you. Thank you for this offer to spend eternity with you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So remember what John 3.36 says. Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. Do you now believe in Jesus as your Savior, your only ticket to heaven? Do you have everlasting life like God said? Well, if you said that prayer, you do. And the angels in heaven are rejoicing. And your name is being written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Welcome to the Kingdom Family of God. Now, if you want to grow closer to God, then read His Word. Read God's Word every day. Pray. Find some praise music. I don't even listen to praise music anymore. i got to get back to doing that at night. I mean, I do during the day. But, I mean, I was listening to it when I did my lesson. But I keep forgetting Anyway, God is the one who gives us freedom through Jesus. So tomorrow, as you celebrate Independence Day, think about that. Think about God and the freedom that he offers us through Jesus. Okay, I'm going to read my notes. I may not read all of them. Sometimes I have a hard time finding where to start. Oh, this is something that I thought of that I'm going to share when I do my uh, presentation. I'll share it with you too. The truth will set us free. So the truth 
God's truth will set us free. The truth will empower us to know more. It does. The truth empowers us to know more. The truth will move us to action. The truth will move us to action. So, we're, <laughs> we were kind of talking about my volunteer thing that I'm, my volunteer endeavor that he has called me to do. And uh, he wanted me to work on learning the script today. Uh, but I did not, but I could start tonight. Um, he said, stay in the moment, child, with me and do not stray too far into the future. Pray, child, for these innocent children and do not give up on them. So I just, I know of some cases now where some, some kids are missing. Not in my area, but just in the United States. And so that's who he's talking about, is praying for them. And praying for others, too. Praying for other kids that are stuck in kids, teens, and young adults that are stuck in human trafficking. Because there's a lot of those, too. He said, I have given you the burning desire to want to help educate people about this horrible business of buying and selling people. God thinks it's horrible. He says, all of my creation deserve freedom, but they choose bondage. And, and some do. Some do that are in sin have chosen bondage over God, the bondage of sin. And I said, thank you, God, for another day of mercies and blessings, new opportunities to share your truths in the gospel of Jesus. Thank you for another day to get things done on my list and to start working on learning the script that I need to use next week. Please keep me in the moment. I know who gives us freedom, and it is you, God. Thank you for leading me to what you want me to learn tonight. Thank you for guiding me on how I need to learn my assignment. Help me to practice also. Thank you, God, for meeting me today and helping me see what you want me to do. I love you with my whole heart, soul, mind, and strength. Give my mama and daddy a hug, God. I love you too, my child. Now go be obedient in all I ask. The reunion is soon, so be ready. All beauty, peace, love, enjoy here like you have never seen or can imagine child be ready to go in an instant let go of the things of the world they will melt away child and I said Maranatha God so it is time I am so hot in here I have my door shut it is so hot in here. I had to turn my fan on high. My little bitty fan is so little, but it is purple. I like it. All right, so it's time to do the blessing. God's blessing. And I can bless no one. God has many blessings for many. Plus, he has freedom. He has the blessing of freedom, and all you have to do is ask for it. Okay, the Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Thank you, God, that you give us peace. Thank you that you give us freedom. Thank you that you give us so much. You give us so much, God. You created so much for us. All right. Well, I am going to jump back into prayer, and I'm going to get off of here so I can go get Seth fed. It's time for his dinner. God, we just thank you. We thank you for freedom, God. We just pray for all those that are out there in the bondage of sin, God, that they 
that you would open their hearts and their minds to truth, that you would allow the Holy Spirit to draw them to Jesus so that they could be saved, God. We just pray for the ones that have strayed away, God, that you would draw them back to you, that they would repent and that you would reconcile the relationship that y'all once had. God, we pray tomorrow for safety. We pray for safety for people that are traveling this weekend, this holiday weekend. We pray for safety tomorrow as we go to church and back. And we pray also for safety tomorrow night when people want to start doing fireworks, God. We thank you for the rain that will help keep the threat of fire down. So thank you, that. Thank you, God, that people can celebrate and uh, we'll be burning other people's property up. Thank you, God, for all the many blessings that you've given us. God, we are so thankful and we are so grateful. We do not want to take our freedoms for granted, God. Just please keep our country free. There are many, many directions that it's leaning towards, God, but please keep us free. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, my Pray and Share Warriors have an awesome rest of the night and an awesome tomorrow to Sunday. Um, much love. God bless you all and your families abundantly. Much love and cyber hugs until I see you again. Good night.